Okay, example five. The value of a car dropped from $7,400 to $6,800, right? So there was a decrease here. So it went from $7,400 and then it decreased to $6,800. What percent decrease, right? So what, what percent, um, what was the percent decrease? Um, so there's a couple ways we can, we can do this, but the easiest way is to look at the formulas. So I'm actually gonna look at the next slide really quick. There's two really important formulas that you have to know. One is absolute change and the other one is relative change. So absolute change is when you take uh, an ending quantity and you subtract it to a starting quantity. So for example, it went from 7,400, AKA this was our start, our starting quantity. And what's the ending quantity? $6,800. So if I asked you, what is the absolute change? All you have to do is subtract them, okay? And why is it the absolute value symbol? So the absolute value symbol are, is kind of these vertical lines here. The absolute value symbol simply just takes an answer, whether negative or positive. It just makes sure that the final answer is a positive one. And why is this? Because when we're talking about money, for example, right, you can't have negative money. So it just makes sure that your final answer is positive. So um, if I just follow the formula here, it says the ending minus the starting. So the ending quantity is $6,800 minus the starting, which is $7,400, right? So if you do 6,800 minus 7,400 on your calculator, you're gonna get negative $600, right? That doesn't make sense, but again, it's the absolute value. And again, the absolute value just makes sure that your answer is positive. So the absolute value of negative 600 is positive 600. So this right here is the um, absolute change, right? So let me just write that down real quick. Um, let's do green. So I'm gonna abbreviate here the absolute change. Okay, so now notice this is $600 difference, right? So the question is asking me what percent decrease? So that's where we're gonna have to use our second formula. So notice over here on the second formula, the unit here is percent, right? The absolute change, it had the same unit as a starting quantity. So since the starting quantity was dollars, then that's why the, uh, the unit of the absolute change was also dollars. But the relative change, uh, that's gonna give us our percent. So we're gonna do this formula. You're gonna take the absolute change, which we just figured out before, and you're gonna divide it by the starting quantity. So the absolute change, we just found out from step one here actually, was $600 and you're gonna divide it by the start, starting quantity, which was 7,400. So 600 divided by 7,400 on your calculator gives us 0 0.081. Now you have to um, take this number and convert it into a percent, and we've gone over that a million times already. You're gonna move the decimal place to the right. So 0 0.081 is the exact same thing as 8.1%, right? So there's an 8.1% decrease. So let me just add on to this slide here for the relative change. Um, so when I write the unit is percent, you have to make sure you convert it into a percent. So you have to move the decimal place two times to the right, okay? So um, pretty much this information is what I wrote here. Okay, so how do we get better? We just gotta keep doing more examples. So example seven, suppose a stock drops in value by 60% one week, and then it increases in value the next week by 75%. Um, is the value higher or lower than where it started? So let's say uh, we start with $100, right? So this is a two-step problem. So first, um, it drops by 60%. So we should be subtracting here. 
and then it increases. So we're adding by 75%. Now this is a totally multiple step problem. This is a multi-step problem. So is the value higher or lower than where it is started? So let's find out. If we start with $100, we're gonna subtract by 60%. So $100, $100 minus 60%. Now, what are we doing 60% of? We're doing 60% of the 100, right? So 60% is the same thing as 0 0.60 of means times 100. So 60% uh, or 0 0.60 times 100 is $40. So now let's not forget, you have to subtract it, right? So 100 minus $40 is $60. So uh, after one week, when it's uh, subtracted by 60%, oh, I'm sorry, 100 minus 40, yeah. So we're here. Next, we have to increase it by 75%, okay? so. Now I'm going to take $60 and I'm going to add 75%. Uh, Whoa. Okay, so if we were to do that, oh wait, that's why I'm confused. I'm sorry guys. 60% <laughs> of 100, I think I put that on my calculator wrong, 0. 0.6 times is 60. Duh. I have my, I, I copied my um, answers wrong. That's what happened. So, sorry guys. So 0. 0.6 times 100. So it's 60. So now 100 minus 60 is $40. Sorry about that. Okay. I was copying the wrong answer here. So if we start with $100 and we subtract by 60%, now we're left with $40. That makes much more sense. Okay. So now, we're taking that $40 and we're adding 75%. So what are we doing 75% of, of $40? So we should be doing 0.75 times 40. So 0.75 times 40 is 30. So 40 plus 30 is $70. Okay, so all of this work just to figure out that if we start by $100, right, when we subtract by 60%, that's $40, then it increases by 75%. So now we end up with $70. So is the value higher or lower than where it started? Obviously, if it started with Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Obviously, if it started with one hundred dollars, oops, and it ended to seventy dollars, there's clearly a decrease here, right? So I just want to practice really, really quickly. Um, what would be the relative change? So if our starting price is a hundred and our ending is $70. So if we do the formula of the relative change, so first you have to do the absolute change, so that's the absolute value of the ending, so 70 minus the starting. So in other words, what's the difference? It's $30, right? So this answer of the $30 would be the absolute change. So uh, when you do your quizzes on Luminome, you are going to be asking, what's the absolute change? Your answer would be $30. Okay, so what if I asked you for the relative change? Well, that always gives us the percent decrease. So if we look at our formula, it's the absolute change, which we found out $30, divided by our starting quantity. So 30 divided by 100 is 0.3. And then you just have to make sure you uh, convert that to a percent. So you're gonna take the decimal and move it to the right two times. 
So this is actually a total coincidence and I love when this happens. So where the, the absolute change and the relative change are the same, but the uh, unit of measurement is different. So the absolute change is the same unit as the quantity, right? So if we're talking about money, then the absolute change, we're gonna talk about money here. The uh, relative change is always, always, you're gonna convert that to a percent. So either it's a $30 decrease, so that's absolute change, or it's a 30% decrease, which is the relative change. So it's actually cool because we get the same exact answer here. And I think, was that my final answer here? Or my final, let's see, was that my last slide? Nope, I have one more. Okay, example 10. So a politician's support increases from 40% of voters to 50% of voters. Describe the change. So in other words, let's practice um, doing the uh, computing both types of changes. There's absolute change and relative change. So looking at the formula. Um, so let's do absolute change first, since we're gonna need that to compute the relative change. So it goes from 40% to 50%, right? So there's an increase. So 40% is the start and 50% is the end. So to find the absolute change, that's the end, the absolute value of the end minus the start, right? So 50 minus 40 is 10 and the absolute value of 10 is 10. So in this case, actually um, the absolute change in this particular case, because this is talking about percent as the original unit, actually here, it's gonna be a 10% difference. So actually when, by the way, if you see this on Lumen Ohm, when you see absolute change, if your unit of measurement is percent, then it also, you can also um, say 10 percentage point, 10, 10 percentage Okay, so I'll repeat that. So here we just found the absolute change. If the absolute change happens to be a percent, you can also call it a percentage point. And if I go back, um, nope, I didn't write that down over here. But, so I'm talking about over here, right? So uh, the unit of measurement is sometimes going to be percent. But if that's the case, you can actually just call it a percentage point. Okay, so that's the absolute change. Absolute change is 10%, or we can say 10 percentage points. Now let's do the relative change. The relative change, it's kind of hard to write with my finger here. The relative change in the formula is you take the absolute change, we just, which we just found out was 10, and we divide it by the starting which is 40. So 10 divided by 40, let's see, did I do this ahead of time here? Yes, is 0.25, but then you have to convert that to a percent. So moving the decimal place to the right two times is 25%. So the two types of change is you can look at it as it was a change in 10 percentage points, or you can say there was an increase by 25%, right? So those are the two types of changes.